every day in the fitness game can be a fight. Whether it's that last round or set in the gym or avoiding that sweet tooth or gooey mac and cheese in the kitchen. That's why I'm here. I'm taking on the challenge of turning those sinful recipes into a healthier version that not only tastes good, but it's gonna keep you sharp in the gym and sharp in the kitchen the optimum way. There's no way. I'm ready for the challenge. Let's get this knockout. Welcome to another episode of Optimum Fitness Meals TV. Today I'm introducing a new series that we're going to be launching called There's No Way You Can Make That Healthy. So what does this actually mean? I know we all have our favorite dishes that break that healthy rule. For me, love mac and cheese or my mom's lasagna rolls. Give me all the pasta. <laughs> um, so I know, like I said, we all have those favorite things, whether it be a sweet tooth, pasta, whatever it is, that kind of breaks those rules. And to think about making that healthy, there goes the taste, there goes the flavor, there's no way it's gonna taste the same way, there's no way it can be original. So, there's no way you can make that healthy, I'm taking on that challenge. I'm gonna take our favorite dishes, um, take some of these non-healthy, there's no way you can make that healthy dish and challenge myself to actually make it healthy. We'll be bringing in taste testers to try them out, no sugar coating, and we'll even have a fun little competition with it where we can keep track, see how many I can actually win to be healthy. All right, so with that, let's take on our first challenge. Um, if you guys didn't know, our owner and CEO of Optimum Fitness Training has a little bit of a sweet tooth. And if you didn't also know, his absolute favorite is red velvet cake. So when he's making you do all those flutter kicks and burpees, try bringing some red velvet cake next time. See if you can maybe sweeten the deal to have to do less or something, because we know he loves to torture all of you with that. So. With that, he obviously stays very healthy and fit and tries not to indulge too much on that red belly cake. So I'm going to take on the challenge of actually making a red velvet cake smoothie that's a little bit healthier, um, obviously much less in terms of quantity versus a whole entire cake um, with some cream cheese frosting. Um, but stays true to the flavors of red velvet cake. As you can see, we've got the cocoa powder, um, cherries, strawberries, kind of getting that berry flavor. Um, and we'll be blending it into a smoothie and I actually have him coming to be my taste tester to see if I can actually win this challenge. So with that, let's get to making this smoothie and see if it works. Remember, I've never made this before. So fingers crossed for me, that I can actually win. I don't get to beat him a lot, especially when it comes to fitness, so maybe I can beat him in the kitchen. All right, so I've got frozen strawberries, frozen cherries. Um, there's about a cup in each of these bags, um, which is exactly what we need for the smoothie, so it works out perfectly. Um, like I said, I've got cocoa powder, um, vanilla, and then we're using oat milk. So I really like oat milk. Um, I'm also a huge fan of almond milk, which you can definitely use almond milk in this recipe as well, um, just based off of some of the research that I did. Um, oat milk and almond milk, both great, packed with a ton of nutrients, ton of vitamins. Um, oat milk does have a little bit um, more carbs to it because obviously it's derived from oats, 
but there's nothing wrong with that. Um, still, great source of calcium, great, great source of vitamins, like I said. Um, so we're gonna be going with oat milk for this recipe. So the first thing you need to do is we need a cup and a half of the oat milk. Um, and I actually have little cheat lines on my blender. Uh, obviously, if you don't have those, you can use a measuring cup. And then, like I said, we need a cup of each of the berries. These are already pre-portioned for me. I got lucky. Um, like I said, I just looked on the back and how much was in these, and there was a cup each. So it uh, worked out perfectly for what I needed. So we'll pour those cherries in there. Careful not to splash oat, oat milk all over yourself. And then we've got some frozen strawberries. These are the whole ones, really doesn't matter, whole halves, whichever you can find in the store. Um, with the whole ones, obviously you'll wanna make sure that your blender is nice and powerful to get all of those. As you can see, I probably should have put those in before the cherries so that they were close to the blender, but we'll, we'll make it work. So now that I have my utensils that I needed, um, we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And then you want a tablespoon of cocoa powder. Let's see if we get this open. All right, here goes nothing. So we're gonna throw the lid on here. And I'm gonna blend this up first uh, to see, obviously using frozen berries, it kind of serves like a pseudo replacement, if you will, for ice. I'm gonna blend it together first, and I actually do this with all of my smoothies when I use the frozen fruit, is I blend it first to see the consistency and the thickness if it also then needs the ice on top of it. So just a little tip, if you will, from my personal experience. to get some of those top ingredients down. And then we'll restart the blender. Smells pretty good. Might have a chance here, you guys. Might have a chance. Also, as I was doing some research on this replacement, goodness, I'm so messy. Um, Another alternative option with the cocoa powder is actually if you wanted more protein, you could do, use chocolate protein powder and so use a tablespoon of chocolate protein powder instead of a tablespoon of the cocoa powder. Um, I wanted to stay true to the recipe for this first challenge and we'll see if we can make some alternatives into the future. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a cup, we'll get it poured in, and then we'll bring in our taste tester and see if we can win this challenge. Alright guys, we got the true test here. I think he's a little skeptical. But, alright, so again, we've got the red velvet cake smoothie to replace his sugary, sweet red velvet cake. Um, we're kind of taking to the challenge. One serving of this to one slice of cake with cream cheese frosting is kind of the way that I measured it out in terms of nutrition facts and all that good stuff. So let's see if we can do this. By the way, guys, just want to let you know that there's no way I'm going to be faking my emotions, faking any of that stuff. If it really tastes bad, I will let you guys know.
There's no hiding this. I, regardless, I don't hide a lot of things if you know me personally. <laughs> so uh, you can get the truth. So let's see if she can really actually uh, turn this around because I allow myself my cheat meals by aligning my macronutrients right and again, aligning my workouts prior to when I decide to do my cheat meals. Again, cheat meals, I don't do them all the time. One meal out of one day of the week and that's it. So, all right, see if we can do this, you guys. This, fingers crossed. To this, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> We're gonna see. <laughs> all right, here he goes. You're not gonna get your feelings hurt, are you? No, just no. letting you guys know. Yeah, no. I'm gonna be brutally honest. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Did we win? Okay, I mean. Oh, the taste is there. Ah, that's one point. The taste is definitely there. Um, you don't miss out on the sugar. So if you are having a sweet tooth, it's definitely a good replacement. So one slice of red velvet cake with cream cheese frosting, 42 grams of sugar. One slice. <laughs> but again. This smoothie, <laughs> only 20 grams. Okay, just just okay. mentioning that. So again, the taste is is there. It's bold enough, but you just it's not the same with getting <laughs> the softness of the actual cake. Fair. This fair. is. I mean. But keep in this mind. This is this is great. It, it, it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's let me let me go after it. <laughs> so remember the motto of this series. Was we might not be able to make it exactly, so it might not be cake for cake, but our goal was let's not lose flavor and make it healthier. I'll give you, I'll give you the flavor. I'll all give right. you the healthy part of it. <laughs> so, with that being said, the healthy part of it. All right. So you got me convinced. Um, I could eventually replace this and not eat the actual cake, even though again. It's all about the moist cake <laughs> and all that. Adding some cream cheese on it, potentially some ice cream, you got a winner. But no, awesome, awesome job with this. I'm actually very surprised on that. So, as you know, very nutrient content. I'm very heavy on my macros and I always like to keep count of that. And I that's what I'm about when it comes to my clients, my business, and all that stuff. So please at least let me know a little bit of the nutritional side. Uh, how does it compare to a slice of cake? Let's put these side by side just to get the visual. Again, one slice of cake, cream cheese frosting. I know. Okay. There's nothing like it. 18 <laughs> grams of fat. Smoothie, five. Okay, when okay. when I can have I can have multiple of those yeah. and still wouldn't catch up to one slice exactly. of cake. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. There's a win. There's a win. Again, one slice of cake, 49 carbs. Smoothie, 29. Okay. okay. Again, win win. Most of your carbs in this are coming from the oat milk, like I mentioned, because again, it being derived from oats, the berries do bring a little bit um, into the mix as well, but it's mostly coming from the oat milk. So you'd actually see even a decrease in the carbs if you used almond milk as a replacement because it actually has less carbs. It might give you a little bit different flavor. I'm going to have to try that the next time to see how it tastes differently with the almond milk. But if you are kind of that carb conscious, the almond milk would bring it down a little bit more. Um, protein. So one slice of cake, four grams. Smoothie, <laughs> six. So, so it's went in the protein size. Yeah. The other place that you might be able to even up the protein, I mentioned the replacement for the cocoa powder and using chocolate protein powder. So you might even get a couple more points there in the protein part as well, Mr. Macros. Still, guys, the most important part is, <laughs> does it make you happy in your soul, okay? Does it make your soul happy? No. Honestly, good job. I will give this a win. I'll All give right. this a W. All right. So, one, one for one all the fitness meals. One up. All right. I'll give like you I that. said, so, I don't get to job. meet them often when it comes to fitness kind of stuff, but we might be able to catch them in the kitchen. So, with that, again, thank you so much for tuning in to Optimum Fitness Meals TV. Hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell and the banner if you want to receive notifications when we put out new videos. We're gonna keep this series going. See if I can keep my winning streak going. Um, please, please, please. 
comment below. Give me your recipes. That's your favorite unhealthy recipe, your cheat meal, whatever it is, and I will see if all of them. All <laughs> I will see if I can take on the challenge and making it healthier for you. Um, with again, without losing that flavor, um, or again, sometimes it's just what makes your heart happy, and you need that unhealthy meal. Like I said, that mac and cheese, those lasagna rolls. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to our taste tester. Um, got you on this one. We'll see if we can keep the streak going.